more on the Fed's decision and the U.S. economy. I'm joined by Barry, CEO and CGTN Global Economics Analyst, Sarahan Hatopoulou. Good to have you back. Pleasure to be here. So, Sarahan, how would you characterize the overall health of the U.S. economy? Well, I think it's good. The Federal Reserve thinks it's good. Uh, we have a nine-year uh, long old recovery, if you will. Uh, it's not as fast as a lot of people are saying, but it's one uh, we're close, getting close to a record nine years. It's the Rodney Danger field of recoveries. It gets no respect, but it is there and it's happening. And the data show also that the economy is on the, on the right footing. We're just waiting for the fiscal stimulus measures. Will they come? Uh, when they will come? The infrastructure spending, the tax reform. Uh, depending on that, uh, the medium term may be actually even better. Now, we certainly see that stock markets continue in this record territory. Are the fundamentals still stable, or could we perhaps be bracing for a correction? Well, yes and no. There are two schools of uh, thought there, Rochelle. Um, earnings growth, uh, they're pretty good. Earnings uh, are doing really well this year. That's a very good um, sign that things are, uh, we're seeing positive things in the stock market. Uh, we're seeing uh, a weak dollar, which is helping the multinational corporations. That's very good, too. And again, waiting for this Trump infrastructure spending tax policies is good. Also volatility. Uh, we're all amazed at how low volatility is given what's happening in Washington, D.C. and places around the world. Um, there are different reasons for that, but I think it's one of the reasons that the stock market is doing well. It's just passive investing taking place, and uh, people see, or investors seem not to care too much about day-to-day -day business of Washington, D.C. especially. Now, let's look at um, infrastructure spending and this agenda of tax cuts. A lot of people are still waiting for these things to, co to come to fruition. Obviously, right now, the president has a lot on his plate, health care, connections with Russia. And the IMF actually cut its growth forecast for the U.S., reflecting doubts about the Trump administration's ability to push these things through. How concerned should we be right now? Well, we should be concerned because uh, there is um, absolute paralysis in Washington. We're not unfamiliar to that. Uh, we've been here for a long time. We know how things work. But it's, it's gotten extremely worse at this point. And we don't know about these policies. Eventually, they'll pass, Rochelle. Some form of tax reform, some form of infrastructure planning will pass. But how will it be or what will it look like is the problem. Because infrastructure spending actually could damage the economy if it's not targeted. If it is sustained spending, like wall building in Mexico or other things, that could actually, that will increase the supply of bonds into the market at a time when Federal Reserve is reducing demand. So that means that the prices will rise and the, uh, will fall and yields will rise. And that is not good news for the Federal Reserve's interest rates. Because if they increase faster than what Federal Reserve is thinking now, that could be very damaging to the U.S. economy. Now, something else the Fed is watching is the stubbornly low inflation rate. We know it's below the Federal Reserve's target. Why is it so important to address inflation? Well, it is important because if expectations of people, consumers, uh, stay or on the position that inflation will remain low, they're not going to spend. They're going to wait more for prices to, to decline. Look, everybody is in awe about this, including the Federal Reserve. Janet Yellen is not coming out and saying, I don't understand how this is happening, but she is she's surprised about this. And it is not about the new cell phone plans that are cheap, which she said, which I was very surprised about. There's something else going on here. It could be technological um, innovations. Amazons of the U.S. may be putting pressure on the uh, downward pressure on the prices. It could be structural, aging population. Globalization is still here despite this administration's attempt to reverse track. That means competition is taking place. And finally, psychology. Let us not forget psychology in, in economy. In 2007, 2008, when the crisis started, people suffered a lot. Now people who have jobs are not pushing for jo uh, wage increases. Businesses are not pushing to increase their prices because they're in competition with other businesses. So there are other reasons why the inflation is low and will probably remain low for a while. Now, something else that seems to be simmering on the horizon is what's happening with the subprime auto loan market. We know that J.P. Morgan chief uh, Jamie Dimon raised concerns about what he called the stretched automotive loan market. We're also seeing an increase of default on some of these auto loans. Obviously, with a bubble, sometimes you don't know you're in one until it pops. Is it a bubble, or would you say that it's not so much of a systemic issue? Well, I think it's a bubble, but it is not systemic. So uh, if you look at the mortgage markets, we're trying 8 trillion or so. I think this is 1.2 trillion as of the end of first quarter. Look, student loans are the second largest consumer debt category, $1.3 trillion. So uh, yes, there's a problem there, but I see some good things in there, Rochelle, in that lenders are doing checks and balances on themselves thanks to the regulations that were introduced after the mortgage crisis. Uh, in the first quarter numbers, if you look at it, new car loans actually decelerated for the first time in two years. So there is that going on. 
What I'm worried about the auto situation is not really the loans, it is the industry itself. There's a lot of inventory out there, but people are now not able to get as much loans to buy cars. So that will have an impact, negative impact on the auto industry. And just lastly, what do you think needs to happen to really get the U.S. on a path to more robust growth? Well, we have to have um, understanding parties in the Congress, and good luck with that, sitting down and actually uh, thinking like what Senator McCain talked about yesterday, pretty much, sitting down and getting the differences out. Because monetary policy, as we've seen, is not enough by itself to get the economy going. They could get the recovery going, should they have, but we need the fiscal stimulus, and it has to be responsible. Tax reform cannot be cutting the uh, taxes on the wealthy. Trickle down does not work. We can talk about in another program. Uh, and infrastructure spending has to be targeted. If they get some kind of a package that's acceptable to both parties, uh, we're going to see uh, very good numbers uh, in the medium to long term. Acceptable to both parties, obviously a, a tough issue, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Thank you, as always. Sarah Hatopolu, uh, Global Economics Analyst.